With multiple minor tremors and not one, but two earthquakes felt throughout Israel on Sunday, many officials are asking just how prepared is Israel in the event of a major earthquake. Joining us to discuss is Moshe Chertov, a certified emergency response specialist. Welcome. Hi, Lidar. Hello to all our viewers. So Israel is due for an earthquake. Are these tremors an indication that a big quake is imminent? They could be an indication of an imminent quake. They could also be the release of pressure. Nobody knows, but what we do know is that Israel or this area, it's not limited only to Israel, the area is expecting, is overdue actually for a major earthquake. And the committee dealing with earthquakes in the uh, uh, defense committee, there's a subcommittee for earthquake preparedness. They predict that there will be a 7.5 earthquake in uh, the area where these last two earthquakes took place. And uh, 7.5 is catastrophic, even in the best prepared areas. But what worries me is that uh, the, the Tama 34 plan for uh, uh, re retrofitting substandard buildings, it, it would take, let's, pr let's pretend that the country would pay for every single building to, that needs to be to be retrofitted. It would take three to four years to finish that work and for people to actually get keys to their new houses, retrofitted houses. But in the meantime, uh, the country in 2016 changed the instructions for the public as to what to do during an earthquake. And in most of the world where there are constant earthquakes in the Ring of Fire area, which includes Chile, Japan, New Zealand, uh, the Western United States, etc., they all practice the same drill. And I mean drill because they drill it every year, millions of people, and it's very simple. It's called drop, cover, and hold. And in Israel in 2016, we changed that. And all of a sudden we're told, Everyone must rush out of a building as, as soon as they can. Where in these other places, they're told, never try to go anywhere because you're going to either, be, either fall or get hit by something and, fail, and fall. And especially never leave a building if you're in one because it will protect you. So, so I was trying to bring, yes. So Israel, I mean, why is that? Why is Israel going sort of contrary to the rest of the world? That's a good question. I went. I asked that question. I went to the Israel uh, Geophysical Institute in Lod, and I asked the uh, the experts why they did it, and they contend that there are too many sub uh, standard structures in Israel, buildings that were built before 1985 when the uh, standard was approved, and they feel that uh, too many people will be killed, and they would rather have uh, more people injured, less people killed. So I checked that with the state of Washington, for instance. And I got an answer from one of their experts who told me, if a building is possible, it might collapse on you, you should still stay in the building, drop underneath something which is strong, a strong, sturdy table or something like that. Hold on to it because it will move. You want to move with it and stay there. When it's over, carefully leave the structure. I mean, but so never try to take any steps and definitely don't leave the building. She said, even if the building is likely to collapse. So, I mean, on, what kind of damages building. are we expecting here in Israel in, if, if there were to be a quake of, of such magnitude of 7.5, I mean, both in terms of property and, of course, in terms of life? For the most of us, it will not be a matter of a building collapsing on you or, or uh, telephone poles or things like that. Generally, what kills people are, are uh, items flying across the room because you're in a place in the room, but all of a sudden the room has moved and things that are on shelves that are not uh, well secured, they're flying across the room. A, a five-year-old girl died about uh, 200 meters from my house in Los Angeles in a 6.7 when a huge clock hit her in the head. It's not that the earth will uh, uh, eat us up and then close on us. That's not the, the major cause of uh, injury or death. But yet here in Israel, uh, they're thousand. saying that there will be many buildings that will collapse. So. There Maybe will be buildings that will collapse, but nonetheless, the, ma the majority of people aren't sitting right on top of 7.5. They'll be scattered throughout. 7.5 will be felt in the entire Middle East. And so anybody who's not really near epicenter is more likely to be seriously injured or killed if something goes flying across the room, if their books are not secured in their places, if they happen to be on an next to an external wall, the walls can pop out and the building will, can will stay there, but you could easily fall out of a building and glass will be falling. If you're outside of the building, rushing out, right underneath the building that's covered with glass, it can all come falling down on you. I, we, we have pictures of this. So I was trying to get to the subcommittee to tell them we should reconsider that and possibly go back to uh, uh, drop cover hold. I would like for the committee to investigate that possibility because once they decide that we do, 
it's a matter of a uh, publicity uh, uh, campaign on television where we can instruct all of the kids in all of the schools and within three or four weeks, everybody can save their own lives and we could save thousands of lives. We're expecting 4,200 deaths in a 7.5. 7,500 people will be seriously injured and 130,000 will be homeless. Wow. We can't save the homeless from being homeless, but we can save them from dying. All right, Moshe Cheltov, very important information. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. I, I am not, I, we, I must say, I am not telling people not to do what the country tells you to do. We all must follow what we are told by the authorities, but this is what I've learned from overseas, and I'm going to try to fight to see if we get back to this uh, better instruction, which is tested around the world every year. Thank you. All right, important information. Moshe Cheltov, thank you so much for speaking with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.